this time I would like to welcome everyone to the Town of Lexington Council meeting. This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, May 3rd, 2021. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times over the next week on the Town's Cable Information Channel 1301 and will also be available for viewing on the Town's website. I'm Steve McDougall, the Mayor of Lexington. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you my fellow Council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is Council Member Todd Carnes. Hello, everyone. To his left is Council Member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is Council Member Kathy Manus. Good evening. To her right is Council Member Ron Williams. Good evening. To his right is Council Member Todd Lyle. Good evening. At this time, I would like to ask Council Member Todd Lyle to give tonight's opening invocation. Mr. Lyle. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, just this day, for the much-needed rain, and for just um, all your blessings that you've laid upon us. Um, just ask you to be with us this night as we uh, continue to make decisions and help try to uh, grow our community in the best way possible. Um, remind us that all good things come from you. Uh, we ask you to uh, continue to uh, give us guidance and wisdom as we uh, continue to do the best we can. Love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This time, if everyone would please join me, please stand. Council Member Baker, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Baker. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. Our first item is I'd like to report on our executive session this evening. Council met in executive session prior to this meeting where we discussed the following matters. We had three legal issues. One issue was regarding pending litigation. One issue was advice regarding agenda items. And one issue was advice regarding a town ordinance. We had one contractual issue. That was a downtown development issue. And we had one routine personnel review. No vote was taken in executive session other than to vote to adjourn executive session. Do I have a motion to ratify the mayor's executive session report? So moved. Ms. Livingston, my motion. Is there a second? A second. Ms. Main is second. So all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Deletions on the agenda. Are there any deletions of items on tonight's agenda? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we move new business item one, two, and three so we can have more discussion about it. Mayor Pro Tem asks that we remove new business items one, two, and three from the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds that motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. We'll remove those items. At this time, we'll move into approval of minutes, copies of the minutes. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Um, so we do have the gentleman here from those items that we just removed from the agenda. Uh, you drove all the way here. Um, the reason we removed it from the agenda is we don't have enough information. Um, so at this time, if you'd like, we'd like for you to come forward and uh, kind of share some information about your project. going to put you on the spot but we do want you to come back to our work session and really sit down and talk to us about it Good evening. Um, my name is Brian Coyle I um, uh, represent JS JCF living um, we're looking at um, putting um, the 4800 block of Augusta Road um, we've got it under contract we'd like to develop it into um, a apartment a single family slash duplex a rental community um, we'll be developing approximately 259 units and 143 structures. Um, we will keep the front um, section of the parcel um, dedicated to commercial um, zoning. That's approximately 10 acres. Um, that'll be approximately a 5.5 acre site and another one about, about four acres. And then we'll um, then be turning the rest of the parcel into um, a full rent community. Anyone have any questions? Uh, on what we have in front of us, you just said 259 with 143? 
259 units in 100. Here it says 256 with 140. I'm sorry, but it's just that is 259. 259. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Miss Maynes. So I think our planning commission. You went before our planning commission three times. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay, uh -huh. and so they had some questions that you brought back, and, and yeah, correct. And so, were, go ahead. There was some kind of um, they addressed the um, access with the commercial parcels and how to get back to Dooley Road. Um, we met with uh, the staff members and got that addressed and reconfigured some of our entries to allow. So, if you were to come into the commercial and wanted to get back to Dooley Road, um, you'll be able to do that through a private road that's ungated um, through our property. So, and, and, and we, I didn't go to the planning commission meetings, um, but uh, that's why we wanted to see if you could come back when we have a work session mm -hmm. where you can explain a lot of this to us because ultimately we are the ones that get stopped in the grocery store or at Dollar General all the okay. time yep. to mm -hmm. want to know why we did this. And, and so I, I want to feel comfortable in answering those questions. Okay, understandable. Mm -hmm. okay. And it is, yes, it is 256 units. Oh. 256, yes. Okay, very good. And um, are y'all doing any other projects in South Carolina? Like and we have one going on in, in Hardyville at the current time. Um, it is about just 20 miles due west of um, Hilton Head on Highway 170. Um, it's 88 acres, we'll be, and we'll be building on 55 of those with approximately 272 units there. Very good. Anyone else have any other questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Law. Do you have any other similar projects outside of South Carolina that you Yeah, we have uh, one going on in Lebanon, Tennessee, and one just completing in Huntsville with the second phase starting up. That's so, in Huntsville, Alabama. Similar as far yeah, as? Yeah, almost identical. Very similar. Yeah, it's the same identical um, product. Um, there are, the Huntsville site is going to be end up, end, up, end up being about 80 acres. Um, the first phase is 35 with 178 units. The second phase is uh, 42 acres with 220 units. Um, almost identical structures um, used there will be used here. And then Lebanon, Tennessee is 220 units on about 45 acres. And then we also are, um, just got our plans approved for site work development in Panama City on two sites. Are they all under JCF, or is that just the entity you created for this particular? JCF, it's the the entity that we've created for this particular project. Uh, yes. Who's who's the actual face of the development company? Um, a gentleman um named John Fitzmorris. Um, he's the owner. Does he have any kind of entity he operates under, like holds himself out as, or is that just? Um, well, each pro each project gets um uh, LLC developed. Uh, the first phase of Huntsville. It's an individual. How long has that one been up and running? Um, we finished it up at the, in January. So it's been about four months. So would this one be one that you did in phases, or you'd come in and do everything at once? It, it would. We'd come in and do it at once. We're trying to sequence it with the DOT inter, um, build out um, there at the interstate. So we would start. Um, hopefully by end of the year with construction and then kind of roll it along with then completing it by uh, December 2023 um, kind of what's what we've been under the impression of whenever the, the interchange will be done also very good as you can see there's a lot of interest in this we've never seen this before so we've got some questions we need to ask you um, mm -hmm. and we'll do that at our next one if we could invite you back for work session we'd love to have you back okay, yep. we'll, we'll be there Absolutely. Thanks Thank so much for being here. Thank you. At this time, we'll move into approval of minutes, copies of the minutes from the council meeting on April 5th, 2021, and work session April 9th, 2021, were provided to you in your packets. Are there any omissions, additions, or corrections for regular council meeting April 5th or council work session April 9, 2021? Excuse me, April 19th. 2021. Any omissions, additions, or corrections? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. 
At this time, we'll move into presentations. Our first presentation this evening is a proclamation that will be read by Council Member Kathy Maness. Ms. Maness. Thank you, Ms. We'll Ms. give this one away. I almost did. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The first proclamation we have tonight is for um, our town clerks. Um, a proclamation of the Mayor and Council for the town of Lexington, South Carolina, declaring May 2nd, to the 8th, 2021, as Municipal Clerks Week, and recognizing Becky Hildebrand and Karen Hanner for the valuable contributions they make to the town of Lexington. Whereas the office of the clerk dates back to ancient Greece, when then the clerk guarded the interest of the city, the records, and served as the, as the historian for their community, and whereas the office of the municipal clerk is a time-honored part of local government and is the only municipal staff role required by state law, regardless of the municipality's size or form of government. And whereas municipal clerk's responsibilities under state law include giving notice of meetings to council members and the public, preparing minutes of the proceedings and official actions, maintaining municipal records, managing boards, commissions, and elections, serves as a liaison between town council and their constituents, is the guardian of the town seal, and performs other duties as assigned, and whereas municipal clerks play a critical and varied role by providing administrative support to the mayor, town council, town administrator, department directors, and town staff, while being mindful of, the, of being neutral and impartial rendering equal service to all, and whereas, regardless of the city size, municipal clerks have seen their roles and responsibilities expand with changing times and with advancements in software and hardware. Municipal clerks have been increasingly adept and skilled at using technology to prepare materials for meeting agenda packets, to record me meeting minutes, and to manage and preserve public records and whereas municipal clerks strive to improve the administration of their office through education provided through county, state, and international professional organizations. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the town council for the town of Lexington, South Carolina, that May the 2nd through 8th, 2021 is hereby declared as Municipal Clerks Week to recognize and honor the valuable contributions that Municipal Clerk Becky Hildebrand and Assistant Municipal Clerk Karen Hanner makes to the town of Lexington, dated this third day of May, 2021. So if you two would go right there, we'll present these. Very good, congratulations, thank y'all. Y'all like to say anything? The microphone is yours. Speech, speech, speech. Neither one of you? We just wish all staff had a whole week like we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate. Just giving us the rest of the week off. That yeah. <laughs> that was a fine, fine print on there, right? No, I, can, I, can, I think I can speak for everybody up here and everybody in the audience that are staff members here. We certainly value both of you as very valued employees here at the town of Lexington. And, and without you, we would not be as successful as we are today. So thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just got to say, um, Becky and Karen, and um, especially Becky, since I've been going up through the ranks to president of the National League of Cities, that's added more work to her, and um, I just want to thank her publicly for what she has done. And, of course, Daryl, he's a great video person. Yes, he is. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations to both of you. Our next presentation is a proclamation that will be read by Council Member Kathy Mason. Kathy Maness, this is a proclamation of the Mayor and Council for the Town of Lexington, recognizing and commending Lexington's Sean Norris for being named Richland One School District 2019-2020 Teacher of the Year and finalist for South Carolina 2021 Teacher of the Year. Congratulations. Welcome. Please step forward to the podium. We're going to talk to you a little bit. So before I start reading, I'd like to say a couple of things about Mr. Norris. Um, 
So downstairs, I said to Brad, I said, he lives in your neighborhood. I think he's in your neighborhood or one of the houses over there. And Steve, the mayor said, well, that makes sense now. Why were we recognizing a Richmond One Teacher of the Year? And the, that's because you are a, a citizen in the town of Lexington, and we are so very proud of you. Um, I was honored to serve on the selection um, committee for Richland School District 1 that chose Mr. Norris as the Teacher of the Year for Richland School District 1. And I will tell you, when he came into that interview, well, first we loved to watch it in, in his PE class. It was amazing. And when he came in to the interview, he blew our socks off. I mean, when he walked out of there, we just looked at each other and said, wow. So there was no surprise when you were named Richland One Teacher of the Year. And having seen you in action and know what you do and know how you love these children from the bottom of your heart, I was not surprised when you were the first finalist named for last year's South Carolina Teacher of the Year. So I, I am personally very proud of you and everything that you've done. Um, for those of you who don't know, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. We have many wonderful teachers in South Carolina, like Mr. Norris and his wife, who's also a teacher, and his daughter, who is going to school to be a teacher. How about the son? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's chose the NFL route. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah. So um, during Teacher Appreciation Week, I will tell you, teachers in South Carolina and all over the country have worked harder than they've ever had to work this year because of the pandemic. Absolutely. So be sure to thank a teacher. And um, so let's read this. And I'm just honored that you were with us tonight, Sean. So. Proclamation of the Mayor and Council for the Town of Lexington, recognizing and commending Lexington's Sean Norris for being named Richland One School District 2019-20 Teacher of the Year and a finalist for South Carolina 2021 Teacher of the Year. Now, there's only five finalists, so he's one of the top five South Carolina Teachers of the Year. Wow. Whereas Sean Norris lives in Lexington and has been an elementary physical education teacher for 20 years and currently teaches kindergarten through fifth grade at Satchel Ford Elementary in Richland County School District 1. And whereas he is concerned with childhood obesity and physical fitness and initiated two district-wide fitness programs and received awards in the National Youth Sports Program as well as the DHEC All Health Team Gold Award. And whereas Mr. Norris was named the Richland One 2019-2020 Teacher of the Year for his outstanding efforts aimed at not only teaching students the importance of being healthy and physical, physically fit, but also the importance of dreaming big and setting high goals for themselves. Whereas in February of 2020, he was selected as one of the five finalists for the 2021 South Carolina Teacher of the Year Award for always serving as an outstanding ambassador and advocate for teachers in Richland District 1 and the entire state of South Carolina. And whereas the mayor and council for the town of Lexington always supports excellence in education and celebrate the many accomplishments of students, teachers, and administrators, especially during such a challenging pandemic 2021 school year, and applaud all teachers during this National Teacher Appreciation Week. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and council that Lexington Shaw Norris is hereby recognized and commended for being named the Richland One School District 2019-2020 Teacher of the Year and for being named a finalist and joining the prestigious ranks as one of the 2021 South Carolina Honor Roll Teachers of the Year. Dated this third day of May, 2021. We'll let you get a couple pictures first, then we're going to put you on the spot. Yes, sir. Microphone's yours. Well, I didn't realize you could put that much on a piece of paper. Like <laughs> it's a very humbling experience. Um, I really just feel like I'm uh, doing what God created me to do, which is work with kids. So it's, it's uh, humbling in the sense to be recognized for just doing what you're supposed to do. 
Uh, from from an early age, I've always loved sports. And I've loved working with kids, and so it became a natural fit. I spent my first 17 years of that 20 years working at Hyde Park Elementary, inner city, working with at-risk kids, and uh, it was an awesome place to learn how to really love kids where they are and meet needs, and I got the privilege to come to Satchel Ford. I called it like the Disney World of uh, elementary schools. It reminds me a lot of, the, of uh, Pleasant Hill where my kids went. It's a lot like that school. So it's been a privilege to do that. Um, I really appreciate what you guys have done uh, as far as uh, leading our community and taking care of us, during, especially during this pandemic time, and making a lot of tough decisions. I know as a teacher, uh, there's a lot of tough decisions that are being made above me and that come down. And I want you to know as a teacher, I, I, you, know, you don't always agree with everything that happens above you, but you sure do appreciate the, the hard work and effort and the thought that goes through it. So from a teacher, Guys, I just want to tell you thank you for that. Um, it's, it's a thankless position. Um, I do want to acknowledge my wife because there's, there's, you know, my wife is my, in, in many ways, uh, is one of the best teachers I know. And so if I could just have her stand, it's my wife, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's my best friend, and she's one of the best teachers. She's a kindergarten teacher, and I call that combat no matter what school. It is combat. I agree with you. I, I have kindergarten one hour every day. She has it all hours every day. Oh, wow. And so it's, uh, it can be very interesting. Um, and then my two kids, Hannah, who's going to be a teacher, and my son, Jonah, and my mom and my dad in the back. And I just want to thank them for all the support over the years. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for honoring me this way. It's very humbling. You're thank welcome, you. Sean. And we're going to be rooting for you for Teacher of the Year. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. Mom and Dad, y'all did really good. You should be very <laughs> proud. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Y'all are welcome to stay, or if um, you need to leave, that's fine, but I need to step out one more time. Absolutely, Miss Mace. Thank you all very much for being with us. Our next presentation is from Z Bill Zebritz with Stanick Engineering. Mr. Bill, how are you this evening? Thank you for being with us. I butchered your name, I'm sure. How do we advance our slides? All right. Well, I am, um, I'm Bill Zebritz, and I'm here with Jeff Dykstra, and we are here to talk about your water and sewer rates. I'll wager to say that um, if you sit down and you try to update your list of your top 10 most super favorite things about the town of Lexington, <laughs> there are probably several things that be at the top and the water and sewer infrastructure might not be up there. But whatever it is, whether it's quality growth, you're obviously focused on that, quality of life issues, job opportunities, the, the stuff that you wrestle with every day, most of those things are dependent on your water and sewer infrastructure. This is a really important conversation, and it may not maybe always seem super exciting, but water and sewer rates are necessary to keep you in the, empowered to be able to keep building the system you've got to have, maintaining it right, operating it, funding what you need to do to maintain it and make it go. So that's what we're talking about today. So Jeff, if you would, let me see. So we've got, um, we're from Stantec. We're, uh, hit the next slide. We are a little bitty part of a big engineering firm, but we are a group that does water and wastewater finance full-time, all the time, all over the country, and it's just, it's our main big deal. So we're very serious about it. We've done it all over the place, and I've personally been honored to be of, of use to the, to the town of Lexington for a very long while. Hit the next slide. Um, <clears throat> I just want to, I think, put into context that for many years, for decades, the town, its citizens, its, its councils have been willing to confront these not super interesting and sometimes expensive issues in a very effective way. And literally, I mean for decades. Building the regional sewer system, building contracts, long-term responsible contracts on the water and wastewater side, both. That, that commitment has allowed a lot of the, the things that, that are really visible about this town to happen and to happen in a meaningful, productive, powerful way. So we're gonna, Jeff's gonna just give you a real quick summary of the work that we've already presented to you briefly in work session. Thanks, Bill. Jeff Dykstra. Uh, 
Next slide. Um, so uh, with, the, with the rate study that we performed um, for this cycle of, of rates, the rate study, it's, we're looking at a comprehensive review of all the utilities' rates, fees, and charges. Um, generally speaking, break that into three parts, and we'll cover those in, in summary level here uh, this evening on the next few slides. But the first part of this study was to perform a multi-year, in this case, 10-year financial management plan overview look at the utility, um, projecting out the revenues and expenses over a 10-year uh, forecast period, if you will, um, considering the most recent capital improvement program. So taking all of that information, compiling it into our uh, financial model, and really trying to identify what are the level of rate increases, if any, that are needed, um, specifically looking at the first five years to support the revenue requirements of the system. If you maybe There's a couple of uh, slide buildups if you take a few of them. Um, so what we're really focusing on is the first five years, so from fiscal year 2022 through 2026. And what we identified is a, is a five-year plan of rate adjustments that are needed to support the utility's financial requirements over that time period, um, starting with the first two years of 5.5% and the next three years at 3.5%. What that allows us to do as a, as a utility is, is fund and support the sustainability um, of the system build that to complete the capital improvement program, maintain and operate it, um, while supporting sustainable key performance indicators such as debt service coverage and maintaining sufficient operating reserves for the utility. So overall, a, a financially sustainable and um, strong utility system for the community. Go to the next slide. Anytime we talk about rates, it's always helpful to put things into a national perspective and also a local perspective. So first, from a national standpoint, um, there's a consumer price index, specific um, index within that um, relative to water and sewer services. That's called the water and sewer series. And that measures the literally the annual, the average cost of these water and sewer services for a typical residential household. Over the last 10 years, that's increased, as you can see there on, on the graph, by about 4.5% per year. Um, and in comparison to the town uh, where, at, where you've increased your rates at 2.5%. So you've been able to um, maintain your system, continue to grow it, uh, but at a, at a lower rate than the national average over the last 10 years. Say that out loud one more time. <laughs> I think it's on video, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody heard it, because that's real important. It's a big deal. Um, so that's, that's from a national standpoint. If you look locally or regionally, uh, this is a comparison of a typical re residential bill uh, with water and sewer service. And you can see at 65, 35 uh, a month. Um, with the first year's increase, that's an increase of $3.62 per month. And that would still maintain your position in this survey, in this comparison notwithstanding any, any increases that the other communities may have. So um, again, we'd expect the town's rates and, and bills to, to remain competitive and comparable regionally as well going forward, um, given these proposed increases. The second part of the study was to look at the ancillary or miscellaneous service charges. And so these are things that you don't often hear about. Um, they happen more on the initiation of service side of things. So your service initiation fees, meter installations, taps into the system. Um, so not, not often fees that our customer will, will see directly or, or pay directly, uh, but they're still there and they're an important for the part of the utility. Even though they only represent a couple percent of overall revenues, um, to, the, to the extent that they don't recover the cost of the town to perform the service, that means that the the remaining burden would fall back on the ratepayer. So it's important that we establish these fees um, according to their costs. And these haven't been looked at in several years. And as you can see there on the, the table on the right of the slide shows the current versus proposed. Um, and you'll see some, in, uh, some mostly increases, but some decreases just according to their cost. But again, it's important that, the, that we set these fees according to their costs so that we're not you know, engaging in any equity issues or additional burden on the rate payers. And then lastly is the capital contribution fees. These are the one-time capacity capital charges 
uh, for new capacity for new development. So in this case, growth pays for growth. Uh, this will put, you, have, you have a significant investment in infrastructure to grow your system and to have the capacity to serve new development. And so this represents their portion of that cost that you're in, incurring. Um, these were last updated in 2007, so it's been you know, 13, 14 years or so. And so an update was definitely warranted here. And we're recommending or calculating, but also recommending an increase in the water fee of $100 uh, per equivalent residential unit. So that new fee would be $1,250. And then on the um, sewer side, increasing from $1,900 to $2,700 per equivalent residential unit. So our recommendation for the capital contribution fees is to, to update adopt these updated fees as, as you see on the screen there and then to continue to evaluate these on a three or five year basis because you have some significant capacity related projects in the long term capital plan that could affect the cost basis of the fees so you want to make sure that they're staying current with your costs and then the last slide here so in summary to, to kind of put a bow on those three three different parts of your rates rates and fees structure is the five year plan rate increases this is your monthly user rates increasing as you see on the screen there five and a half percent for the first two years followed by three and a half percent for the remaining three years and then update the ancillary miscellaneous service charges according to the uh, recommended rates and that that maintains their cost I mean that, that establishes fees at their costs and that's an important part of an overall um, you know, equitable rate structure and then finally, uh, recommend adoption of the capital contribution fees as, as seen there. $1,250 for water, $2,700 per sewer per equivalent residential unit. That we, I think we're open to any questions um, otherwise. Very good. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Thank you for all your hard work putting into this report. We really appreciate it. this time I will have a vision plan update for the town of Lexington this is the vision plan update for update for May 3rd 2021 this week the decking and rails are being installed on the fishing piers at Gibson Pond Park the new bridge is being delivered in three different sections with the first one slated to arrive later this week we expect the majority of the dam construction to be completed this month Ice House Amphitheater Pavilion update, we will hold an official ribbon cutting for the Ice House Amphitheater Pavilion on Saturday, May 22nd at 9 a.m. That is the kickoff to the market at the Ice House Amphitheater Pavilion, um, which will run each Saturday through the end of September. We're very excited about kicking that off and seeing uh, the pavilion full of vendors and folks wanting to buy some of those products it has already been a great it already has been great having the space for vendors to set up during the concerts and we look forward to hosting many events in the future um, the amount of things that we can do with that pavilion is just unlimited we're excited about that the vision plan goal there are just a few of the projects that are a result of the town's vision plan council recently reviewed the vision plan and updates will be forthcoming you can read the entire vision plan on the town's webpage at lexsc.com. At this time, we'll have a traffic update from Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Signal upgrades continue along 378 and Sunset Boulevard as the new mast arm foundations are installed as part of the final phase of our adaptive signalization system. Construction is also ongoing at North Lake Drive as work has now started on the southbound side of the road. Exercise caution when driving through these areas. There will be nighttime lane closures at the Mineral Springs and Sunset Boulevard intersection starting tomorrow, May 4th, 2021 for widening of this area. The new lanes are expected to be open in about a week. If you are aware of any traffic signal issues, unsafe roadway situation, or a pothole that needs to be repaired, please call 803-358-7273 and let us know. 
Very good. Thank you, Mayor Tim. At this time, we'll move right into public hearings. Public hearing speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing this evening is final reading of an ordinance rezoning Lexington County Tax Map number 5300-01-015 located at the 200 block of Saluda Springs Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, item number two, final reading of an ordinance for water and sewer rates. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearings for this evening. We'll move right into old business. Our first item of old business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. Final reading of an ordinance to adjust water and sewer rates. Ms. Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Stan Tech Consulting Services Incorporated performed an analysis of the town's water and sewer recurring rates and charges, capital co contribution fees, and various fees to determine the appropriate rates to fully recover costs for water and sewer service, provide significant re reserves, meet our obligations under our board covenants, and provide significant funding for our capital improvement plan. The recommended series of annual rate increases over five years are 5.5% 5 .5 for FY 2022 and FY 2023. Replacement costs less a accumulated depreciation and standard adjustments under the buy-in methodology. Various charges are proposed to be adjusted to reflect the underlying cost of providing particular services. Current standardization out-of-town differen differentials are maintained. A fee in lieu of franchise fee charged directly to the water and sewer system is incorporated in the recommendation to be phased in over five years. I make a motion for final reading of an ordinance to adopt adjusted rates and charges and fee in lieu of franchise fee to be effective July the 1st, 2021. Ms. Manis makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Carnes seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we'll move into new business. We'll move down to item number four in new business. This is first reading of an ordinance, annexing Lexington County tax map number 4300-04-078, located at 311 Reed Avenue. Councilmember Todd Lyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Reginald and Andrea Fuller own two parcels located at 311 Reed Avenue and have petitioned to annex the property. A single family home is proposed to being built on this site. Properties in town near this one are zoned protected residential two, high density residential and limited commercial. Reed Avenue is classified as a local road Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their April meeting and recommended zoning these parcels protected residential or PR one and classifying Reed Avenue as a local road. Mr. Mayor, I would make a motion for first reading approval. Mr. Lyle makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. This is first reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 5423-03-003 located at 110 Mill Street. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ryan Property Solutions LLC owns a parcel located at 110 Mill Street and has petitioned to annex the property. A single family home is located on the site Properties in town near this one are zoned protected residential and Mill Street is classified as a local road. The Planning Commission will review this annexation during the next meeting. I make a motion for first reading of approval. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Carnes. This is first reading of an ordinance entering into a mutual aid agreement with the City of North Myrtle Beach Police Department. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lexington Police Department is entering into a mutual aid agreement 
with the North Myrtle Beach Police Department. This agreement is for 2021 Atlantic Beach Bike Fest event. The proposed agreement is attached. I make a motion for first reading approval. Council Member Carnes makes a motion. Second. Council Member Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ron Williams. This is first reading of an ordinance for sale of town property near Stony Creek subdivision. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Michael and Tracy Farm have expressed interest in purchasing town owned property behind the Stony Creek subdivision. The property consists of 4.03 acres and is largely unbuildable. The property was donated from the developer of the subdivision to the town. Prospective buyers own the adjacent property. Uh, an ordinance and contract will be available for final reading. I will make a motion for first reading approval. Mr. Williams makes a motion. Is there a second? Second it. Ms. Manis seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Lyle. This is first reading of an ordinance to provide for the FY 2021-2022 tax levy. Council Member Lyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. South Carolina law requires town council to adopt the tax levy each and every year. Attached to this is the draft ordinance for the tax levy for FY 2021 through 2022. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for first reading approval of the attached draft ordinance for the tax levy. Mr. Lyle makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Very good. Seeing if y'all were paying attention. We'll go back to num item number eight. This is first <laughs> reading of an ordinance to adopt the FY 2021-2022 budget. Council Member Steve Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. South Carolina law requires town council to adopt a balanced budget each year. Budget revenue and expenditures are attached as well as the draft ordinance. I make a motion for first reading approval. Mr. Baker makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Baker. Uh, Mr. Poole, how many consecutive years are we with no tax increases? Excellent. And um, we additionally reduced our property tax in the town of Lexington in the last year as well. So encouraging things. Yes, sir. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Anyone else? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. This is a temporary sanitary sewer agreement policy. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The town enters into a sanitary sewer agreement with developers establishing the terms and conditions for the provisions of sewer service for new residential development. One term requires that 180 days after entering the agreement, the developer will begin paying monthly minimum fees for every reserve services provided by the agreement. Given the unprecedented impact of the pandemic on supply chains, the substantial price increases for certain raw materials used in home construction and the currently tight housing market, the temporary suspension of the monthly minimum charge would provide, provide needed relief and encourage long-term stability in the housing market. The attached policy suspends the monthly minimum charges on all existing sanit sanitary sewer agreements and provides for minimums on any agreed agreement entered while the temporary policy in is, is in effect, will not begin until 180 days after the temporary policy expires on January the 1st, 2022. And let me be clear on this. For everybody that's already there, it ends on January the 1st, 2022. But anybody that starts now, their 180 days wouldn't start until January the 1st of 2022. Okay. I make a motion for approval of temporary center, sanitary sewer policy. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. 
Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. That concludes our business for this evening. Next, we will hear announcements from Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. On behalf of Mayor and Council Members, we would like to wish Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston a happy birthday later this month on May 22nd. So happy birthday, Hazel. I hope that you've been out to one of the concerts with Lexington Live. These free concerts are hosted by the Town of Lexington on Thursday evenings at 6.30. And I'm glad to have the announcements tonight because this Thursday, the Tams will be performing. And you all know how I love some beach music. Um, they have some serious beach music. So plan to come out for a great night of entertainment on Thursday evening. For a complete list of concerts, please visit icehouseamphitheater.com. The town of Lexington is happy to bring back the wine walk this year. It is May the 8th at the Ice House Amphitheater and Pavilion from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. As the mayor mentioned, the official ribbon cutting for the Ice House Pavilion will be on May 22nd at 9 a.m. This is being held in conjunction with this year's opening of the market at Ice House from 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock. I think everyone will enjoy getting out and visiting all the vendors at the market every Saturday through September. The Board of Zoning Appeals will meet this Thursday at 5.30 here in the Council Chambers. The Architectural Review Board will meet on May the 11th at 9 o'clock, also here in the Council Chambers. This year's Lexington County Law Enforcement Memorial Service will be on May the 12th at 9.30 at the Lexington County Courthouse. And council will meet again on May 17th at 6 p.m. for the council's work session in the Eli Mack Room. The Planning Commission will meet on May 19th at 8 o'clock right here in the council chambers. And Town Hall will be closed on May 31st in observance of Memorial Day. Council will start our summer schedule next month on June the 14th, July the 12th, and August the 16th. On behalf of the mayor and my fellow council members, we would like to thank you for watching your council in action tonight. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Manus. Ms. Livingston, happy birthday. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Very good. Are there any questions from the news media this evening? Are there any public comments this evening? We have neither of those. That concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the town council meeting for the town of Lexington. This meeting was held at town hall on Monday evening, May 3rd, 2021. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the town's information cable channel 1301 several times during this week. And the video will be available on the town's website at lexsc.com. Without objection, we are adjourned.